Hello, welcome to I Got You Day, your daily reflection. And I am Father Sony Sebastian, a Divine Word Missionary Priest. Today we have an account of the very first church council. Two issues were the main reasons for it. Number one, should Gentile converts be obliged to observe the Jewish law? And number two, what should be done to satisfy the mutual cultural sensitivities between Gentile and Jewish members of the Christian communities? The community was divided between conservatives who saw the need for continuity with the past and those who saw the need for change with changing circumstances. The main issue was of circumcision. Many of the early Christians, especially those in Jerusalem, were converts from Judaism. And among these were Pharisees. They believed that Christianity was simply a development of their Jewish faith and not a renunciation of it and that they should continue observing their Jewish traditions. Circumcision, like many of the other practices of the Jews, was a crucial identifying mark of God's people, even though the original reason for the practice may well have been hygienic and preventative. With the acceptance of Gentiles into the Christian community, the issue of circumcision becomes a delicate one. Should the new, the new non-Jewish converts be forced to undergo such painful operation? Was it really central to the Christian identity? It seems that the Christians in Antioch were not enforcing it on their new Gentile converts. And this was causing some concern among Jewish Christians in Jerusalem. So they sent delegates to Antioch with a strong message. It said, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. But still, the Antiochian church did not see that compulsory circumcision should be part of the package. It was of course a telling point that Paul himself, of course a Pharisee, was against compulsory circumcision of the Gentiles. As a result, a group of delegation from Antioch, including Paul and Barnabas and some of the others, went down to Jerusalem. When they reached Jerusalem, they gave the same message about their great success in bringing Gentiles into the Christian communities. But they were challenged by the conservatives of the day, converted Pharisees who again, as in Antioch, insisted on the absolute necessity of circumcision for all converts. The whole group then proceeded to discuss the matter in depth. There is much for us to learn from this experience of the early church. There is certainly a need for continuity if the church is to retain its identity and its links to, the, to its origins. That is why the scripture, both Old and the New Testaments, is the foundation on which our faith is built and why we need to come back to, all, come back to it all the time. At the same time, if the church is to present its message in a way that is meaningful, it must also be ready to make the necessary adjustments without losing their meaningfulness. We see this happening today as well. The questions of sexual morality, artificial contraception, married priests, women priests, homosexuality, homosexual priests, same gender marriages, the LGBT issues, you know the name, the list would go on. The church is constantly being torn apart by these issues. There will always be a measure of tension between these two movements, the conservative and the progressive. Both are necessary and a sign of a living church as long as it is a matter of diversity and not division. What is vital is that people on each side be open to frank and sincere dialogue like what we see in today's reading. 
such dialogues backed by prayer and the spirit of the lord will surely lead the church to new pastures and awakenings so let's pray lord continue continue to lead your church in ways of truth and wisdom 